Okay, Waitley Elementary School Committee meeting beginning at 8.03. <laughs> um, first thing is to approve the minutes of our November 16th meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay. We're on to the financial statement and warrants. Uh, so I emailed out the financial reports. I don't have a formal report. There's nothing new to report on as concerns or changes. Um, but for the record, there were 13 warrants signed electronically since last meeting. That total was $73,728.20. If you have questions, I'm happy to take them. Not specific line items. <clears throat> I don't have any questions. Does mm -hmm. anyone else? Okay. And now we're on to the principal's report. Good morning and happy new year. Happy, happy new year. New year. Um, <clears throat> last time I told you we were planning Monty's March, and now I can tell you about the end result on November 23rd. And the students held our own version of Monty's March to support the cause of food insecurity. This event was coordinated by the fourth grade in conjunction with their food drive. I'd like to thank all who participated in the march and the food drive. We were able to donate 500 pounds of food to the Amherst Survival Center. Wow. And Chief Sabine, Sabine was kind once again to come and uh, let the kids fill his cruiser, which seems to be the highlight of the, <coughs> the whole event for the, the children. Um, <clears throat> we were finally able to have another winter concert. First time since December 2019, which feels like a decade ago. And there were performances by the band and strings group, as well as performance by each class. Our new music teacher, Leslie Gibson, has been working with students since the beginning of the school year to teach folk songs, dances, and games from around the world. The whole thing was fabulous, and we're so pleased that so many families were able to join us. It was a packed house. I don't know if you guys are both here. Yeah, yes. it was it really was fun. It was packed. Standing room only, which <clears throat> was wonderful to see. Um, we're very fortunate to have our, our little music team. There's Mrs. Carr now. Um, Megan Carr, Carl Knapp, who is the long-term sub for Mary Jo Cheryl. Um, and it's not easy to step in, particularly into that role, um, where he's continuing the work with students that she began. He's doing a fabulous job in our new music teacher, who sees all the students in the school. Uh, the fact that she was able to teach each class, including the preschool kids, uh, a little song and dance routine that they could perform was pretty amazing. And, and I thought it was awfully cute. Very cute. Mm -hmm. um, this past Friday, we began our second attempt at Genius Hour. Genius Hour is a time that is set aside during which students choose <coughs> what they would like to learn about and how they would like to engage in the learning. We first began Genius Hour in January of 2020. It was so exciting to watch students dive into their own passion and interest. <coughs> We were nearing the conclusion of our Genius Hour sessions when March 15th arrived and students were sent home for the rest of the year. As a result, we never got to the Genius Hour Fair when all students would showcase their projects for each other and for families. This year, we're hoping to avoid such a situation. Students will engage in Genius Hour every Friday for the next six weeks. A Genius Hour Fair will be held when all projects have been completed. And um, I unfortunately couldn't be here on Friday when it was kicked off, but I came in to so much excitement from kids who wanted to talk to me about what it is they're doing. I get emails over the weekend from kids who wanted to know if there are certain things that they could do. Can I bring my sewing machine in? You know, it was just, it's great to see that kind of excitement. Uh, it fits well on Friday afternoons because teachers had, there's a routine that happens during early release Fridays. And so they're able to keep that routine and <clears throat> we have that happening on Friday afternoon. And the, the great part about it in my mind is that the entire school is doing this all at the same time. Um, and there's no other time during the day or during the week when every child in the school is doing the same thing. So it's, it's kind of cool that they're all they're all engaged. In Will that. families be able to go to the fair? Assuming that we can have yeah. one. <laughs> I never saw that coming last time. I don't think <laughs> anybody did. Um, it was disappointing in a lot of ways because those students who had a hard time um, choosing a project because they couldn't really understand what it could be. We were hoping that the fair would allow some kids to see where other kids had taken it. So the next time we did it, they would be like, oh, now I get, it. you know, what yeah. this can be. Uh, so we did not have that. I had for the longest time 
a cafeteria filled with all the projects. It was the sad, it was one of the saddest things that was happening at that at that time. Um, so we're very excited to have that. That to me is the the biggest piece is to have that fair <clears throat> where not only families can come in, but we'll make sure that every class has a chance to see every other class's projects. So very excited about that. And is that K through twelve? I mean six. <clears throat> it is K. It's K through six. Pre K. Um, unfortunately, they're they're busy at that time of the day, sleeping. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's very important. And project time is very much what pre K is all day. So I don't yeah. feel like they're missing out on that that kind of learning. And that's it. Okay. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> Any public comment? Do we know? No. Okay. And now the fun stuff. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I printed um a co I'm worried, I don't know if we've got a full copy of it. I, I printed it. Okay, copy. great. <clears throat> um, okay. So FY24 budget. Yay. Yay. Here we are. <laughs> Um, we started planning in November, as you know, based on our calendar. Um, so input from Chrissy is collected as well as from other administrative staff. Um, so that includes uh, facilities, special education, technology, curriculum, um, Darius and myself looking at previous year's history. And then we go through a specific process um, to make sure that we're level funded. So level funded is uh, replicating all of our programs and staffing from the prior year. Um, did I say level funded or level service? Funded. Sorry, funded. I'm getting over being sick also. Bob and I have the same <laughs> That's why thing we put you guys on that weeks. side of the table. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we start with level services, which doesn't mean level funded was the point that I wanted to make because we do build in COLA adjustments and step increases where necessary, whether that's for salaries and wages and then COLA also for some other non-salary expenditures such as utilities. Um, so the first step of our process um, is looking at the contractual and non-contractual wage increases. So we are in um, year two of the contract currently, which is a 2% raise for um, teachers. Did IAs have two this year as well? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> and then there's also step increases. So that's important to remember as well. So anyone that's not on the highest step on either salary schedule is looking at 2% plus their step. So it averages out to about, 5% if you are stepping for an increase on the teacher and IA contracts. Uh, so we're looking at a total wage increase above, of about $56,000 to the budget. Um, that's made up of teachers, IAs, school-based staff, and then central office staff. Um, I think it's important to note that 1% increase is $18,000. So when we're starting off as the first step of this process with a $56,000 increase, we're almost at 3% already. So that's really critical <laughs> to keep in mind as we go through here to see how quickly the budget can increase. <clears throat> um, so the next step that we take is looking at different expense accounts to make sure that we have enough uh, funds budgeted from the prior years. So anything that's been way over in prior years or been way under. Uh, and then also considering the market and inflation, as we know currently right now, the cost of goods is significantly higher than it's been in prior years. So we are looking at about a $30,000 increase to non-salary expenditures. A big chunk of that is sick buybacks retirements. So we have one retirement payout. Um, this is repetitive for Waitley. There's typically one every year. Last year, we paid this from school choice. Um, it's my recommendation that we move this off of school choice and consider general fund or another funding source if that's possible, because our school choice funds that we're going to talk about a little bit later are um, being depleted. We're spending more than we're bringing in. So if we continue to carry this one-time expense, although it is a good spot to pay that from because in a year that we don't have it, we save that school choice money. Um, we just don't have the reserves that we need and I, I'm getting a little bit fearful that we're overusing. <clears throat> so the remaining 10,000 increase is really for supplies and materials. So general supplies, which is education um, related as well as just supplies for the building. Paper is costing us more at those kinds of things, uh, as well as um, <clears throat> some adjustment for facilities expenses. 
uh, including supplies and materials for janitorial expenses. And then we needed an adjustment for grounds and trash removal. Those two contracted services have been going over budget for several years. Small amounts, nothing significant, but I think it's time after multiple years of overages to kind of um, uh, rectify that account and, and make it flush. And then a $3,500 increase to transportation costs that again is for the fuel adjustment that's in the contract and the cost of living adjustment that's in the contract, both of which we have talked about already this year. So the next step is looking at special education drivers. Uh, there isn't going to be an impact to the general fund for special education expenses. We do have special education expenses in Waitley, such as specialized transportation. However, they are, are paid from another funding source. So there's no impact on the general fund for out-of-district placement or special education transportation. <clears throat> the revolving funds and grant revenues is another big step in this process. So we look at each revolving fund, which for Waitley is school lunch, school choice, and early childhood. Uh, we make sure that the expenses that we've paid in the prior year uh, can be paid with the revenue that we're anticipating. This is a big factor for Waitley's budget process this year because the early childhood account can no longer carry two IA wages that have been paid from that fund for several years. Um, the reason for that is that our enrollment, it has not declined. We've stayed steady, classrooms are full, the classroom, there's only one here, um, is full. However, we are seeing an increase in special education students in the preschool program. That means that we're having to provide more services um, for free versus bringing in tuition from families. Um, that's been a pattern over the last several years. So you know we had a huge dip with COVID. Um, and then we have brought in more special education students. So this year revenue is down. Next year, the projections are looking to be about five to eight thousand dollars less as well, based on what we know we have for incoming three year olds this year that will still be enrolled next year. And those are residents, so <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. just make sure that you there's not school choice that the town's paying <clears throat> for the preschool, those are resident students who have special do the sending towns students. pay for the school choice we, special? We, <clears throat> we don't have any see students who need services for pre K. They have to. If they're their town. <laughs> yeah. If they can, they can come here for preschool. But services from the services town. have to be okay. taken care of from the city town. And do we get um, more money from the state for special ed, or is it? Um, we do get money from the state. They are factored <laughs> into the foundation budget, uh, but you're only counted. <clears throat> um, they give you for a credit for a half a day student, not a full day student, even if the child comes full day. Um, and they also, uh, we are also in Wheatley in that uh, hold harmless clause, which is a part of chapter 70 that's, I don't want to go down a huge rabbit hole, but basically, um, unless your enrollment is growing, you're only getting that $30 per pupil increase okay. anyway. So even though they are technically counting them in our budget, it's not adding a significant yeah. amount of revenue. And that half, that half day <clears throat> is on the political side of things, superintendents have been starting to talk to state legislators about, you know, it is a full day program. It's not what it was 15, 20 years ago or even before, um, <clears throat> that they really need to count that as a full day, whatever. So again, it's all, it's, it's a shift. If you move the entire state, it's a, it's a big shift, you know, money-wise, but it is a political point where it's kind of like, you, you know, we're providing full day programs, you're only considered a half day. Not that they would change the funding by a ton. Statewide, it, it makes a big impact on education, but I'm just saying that those are conversations that are happening. Yeah. You're like, why is it like that? Well, people are talking about it, but you know, it's a, it's a slow, chapter seven is a mess. I mean, the yeah. whole formula funding is a mess. And so, yeah. um, anyway. Yeah. So you said it, <clears throat> the early childhood account can no longer carry two IA salaries. It can't carry either or can't carry one? It can't one. carry either oh, of those. Okay. So it will be paying for, um, let me look, I think it's a full teacher salary still but the two IAs that had previously been paid from that account, okay. it we just don't have. I'll show you, actually, we can skip ahead. If you guys, if you flip <clears> your that, page. Will that change down the road? Possibly? So it's all dependent upon enrollment. So okay. if we see a shift and the needs of the community change and we're not servicing as many students with special education needs, we can take more students that- So that's the driver is a, is a special education part <clears> of this is mm. why we can't. 
Right, correct. Take care of the IAs, basically, right? Correct. Okay. So those, and are those kids, those kids will be here in the next year or two years? Or there? So some of them will stay, some of them move on yeah. to kindergarten, okay. depending on their age, but it's also based on what we know is coming in mid-year. So students oh, that turn gotcha. three, <coughs> say, in March. Yep. Okay. Three students starting in March. Oh, okay. We're coming in from reach. And remember the purpose of it. So they, they are, again, they're Waitley residents, and that early intervention is extremely important. So, oh, yeah. you know, that um, that's how we move kids, come kids off special education plans with this early intervention and such. So, again, that, I, don't, I don't know if that was answering you. When you're saying they're moving on here, they would be the residents. No, I was just here. wondering if, like, they're four and they're going to kindergarten oh, next right, year, right. you know, <clears> like <throat> the age of the kids. So if you flip down to page um, five there, we can we can flip and talk about the early childhood um, revolving fund. So <clears> if you look at the start of 24, we're looking at only having 26,000 available. The projected revenue is 57,000 and our expenses are still 80,000. So we're looking at really depleting most of our funds from that account, which is not a good spot for us to be in, because if there's an emergency expense that comes up, um, if we have a really high need student come in, if we need to hire a one-to-one -one IA, we don't have any cushion in this fund. This is a very <coughs> uncomfortable place for me. We're going to talk about some options. Um, how to possibly support this as I continue through the presentation. But just looking at the revenue expenses, you can see we're not bringing in even enough to cover the minimal amount. This is this is a teacher salary and then some minor expenditures um, for a you know, little bit of supplies and materials, snack, you know, little things like that, a couple so thousand dollars. This has that <clears throat> one teacher salary and the two IAs Correct. removed, okay. So uh, anyone else have questions before we keep going? Okay, so we'll flip back to the first page, or the second page, I'm sorry. Um, so you can see, you know, there's this theme here. Like I said, that 1% 1 is 18,000. We started at 56 with wages, 30,000 in non-expenses, 48,000 in <clears throat> additional wages for IAs that are existing. This is existing staff, not new staff. You know, you can do the math quickly in your head that number is creeping up there. Um, and we haven't talked about new initiatives yet, which we're going to talk about next. And this is also an important part of the budget process, um, that we want to consider what new needs the school has moving forward so that we can continue to enhance programs and increase our offerings, um, which makes us more attractive for residents and non-residents. You know, school choice is a big part of our community, and we want to make sure that we're continuing to bring those factors in. Um, so there were two new initiatives that were discussed this year as part of the budget process Chrissy brought to Darius and I. One was a 0.5 FTE academic interventionist position, so that would be on the teacher contract. And then the other is an increase that came up last year during budget season as well and was taken off the table last year, and that's to increase physical education from 0.4 to 0.6. Um, if you have specific questions about the interventionist position, I would absolutely defer to Chrissy on that. Um, the PE I know is to give students an additional day of PE or to give everyone to yeah, that one day. Right now we PE. I can't get any classes until one day. So who doesn't get two okay. days? Or does that okay, doesn't get any. Okay. They they get obstacle course on, on Wednesday with the physical therapist, but they do not get physical ed. I mean they get they're outside playing all the time yeah. and uh, but they missed out on Mr. Kara. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> academic interventionist, what kind of a qualification or what? Um, what is that a teacher? What is, yeah, what is the is, I, definition of that? Is it a psychologist? No, no, no. Ideally, um, someone who could flex between providing a math intervention for students who are struggling a little bit um, or a reading intervention. Um, it's not always possible to find that in the same person, but that would be my my ideal so that we could look at exactly what's going on for students and, and develop groups around that. Um, we, we have a reading teacher, don't we? We have, um, Wendy Will is our reading <coughs> specialist. Since COVID, she's had her hands full with um, initially first and second grade and now first, second and third grade because that's where we kind of, the, the most obvious that kids weren't in school in front mm -hmm. of their 
school teachers, obviously the younger kids couldn't access online learning as well as the older kids. Not that the older kids had an easy time of it either, um, but that's where we're seeing the, the big gaps. So she at one time <clears throat> had the availability to work with maybe a fourth grade group of students in reading. She's really focused on one, two, and three, and, and past the mid-year, she gets involved in kindergarten as well. But in terms of filling those gaps that were a result of COVID, um, we have an, a very close eye in first, second, and third grade. So there's, at this time, there's no um, interventionist for math that would take kids out into special groups. Yeah. Okay. And does this position <clears throat> exist at any of the other three elementary <clears throat> schools? Yeah, they, they have, have some. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I went here, we had a math, there was a math teacher <clears throat> that took kids out of the class. And, was that Mrs. H? It was. She did that. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Shelly, you're saying it's a $41,000 increase with these two asks. Can you break that in half, what each one would be? Yep. <clears throat> so the... Um, PE teacher, I believe, is about twelve thousand dollars, and then the balance is the right. interventionist position. So that, the PE <coughs> that's just um, adding an extra adding day it, yeah. for him. Okay. Is there anybody <laughs> in house that's point something, take care of any of these jobs to give them more time, or is this going to be in totally new, new positions? The interventions would be a new position. Um, and I haven't had a chance to go back, yeah. but someone who's been here long I have said that at one time there was money earmarked for a math interventionist and then something happened and it never, ever came to be. Um, and there wasn't one here when I started here. The PE position, um, there's some hurdles there. At first we would have to approve the funds and then I would have to figure out how that's going to work because our current phys ed teacher is here two days a week and then shoots right the other three days a week so he does not have additional time but I figured it, the first thing to do is to get it funded and then figure out how to how to fill the so it'd be tough trying to bring in a a second PE teacher if we already have one that's doing two days a week and then this person would do what point two point would be one day one day. one day but to go to the next paragraph <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i don't know how much time i should talk about this right okay. before you go down that rabbit hole right yeah. yeah. now we're trying to show the, yeah. the, the big picture the oh they were eliminated yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i did not read on that's okay but i think it's important to know yeah no what we're giving i up. think it's important yeah. that the intervention is what i think is going to be more important is yeah. that right now the special ed education is, is handled by uh, upper and lower Special ed teacher, and <clears throat> as we're seeing an increase in those needs, some of the you know some of the special ed intervention where we had cases where students may or may not have qualified, but we have a small school, so we use a special ed teacher to help out. Correct me if I do anything, anything no, wrong. Here. You know, right. as we have more needs coming in, those kids are not going to be able to be picked up as easily by those things. So if it, if we can't do this, you're going to look at the numbers. Doing it this year is going to be difficult. But it is something for us to keep in the back of our mind as we plan long term, you know, as we track the number of special ed students coming into pre-K and then going into kindergarten and that kind of stuff. If we do see that spike, then we're going to have to, the general ed students will not be able to take from the resource the special ed um, for those who are struggling. Right. So how's that? That's all. But so, go on. That was please, great. Go on. <laughs> um, so yes, jumping ahead to the, you know, drum roll, please. All of these factors taken into consideration, that first draft of the budget came in at 9.2%. Um, we all took a deep breath after seeing that number as part of the budget process and, you know, realistically knew that that wasn't going to be something that we could bring forward to the town. Um, we just talked about all of those pieces because we want you to understand what the needs actually are. Um, I think it'll be important for the town to hear that as well, but we also understand that we have to be fiscally responsible. Um, so we did eliminate the $41,000 request for the 0.5 interventionist and then the 0.2 increase for the PE teacher that was taken off the chopping block first step. Um, and then we also made an adjustment to decrease uh, 9,500 of the non-salary expenses. So basically 
all of that talk that I just did about supplies and materials being increased, we just took that off the board and we'll make do. Um, we'll use grant funds if we can find some or. <clears throat> okay. um, because I haven't touched anything and asked oh. if I was still here. Um, so with that said, we are presenting the first draft of the budget today at 6.61%. It's an increase of $124,885. This is still a significantly high number. Um, the total budget uh, for general fund, <clears throat> why don't you include that in here? I'll add that in for us for next time. Um, at that 6.61, the total general fund budget would be $2,013,569. And Wheatley would use an additional $403,000 from revolving and grant funds uh, to fund the total budget, which is about $2.4 million. This is still a, a high number. You know, 6.1, I know historically you guys have, have brought a number of around six to the town. I think, was it in 19 or 20, um, 2019 yeah. or 2020? One of those years. Yeah. That was also a correction to our school choice issue. Right. We we're trying to <clears throat> we're adjusting the budget to move things off school choice. And So there's sort of <clears throat> a repeat factor here. While we're not talking necessarily about school choice being fully depleted, we are talking about a different revolving fund. So it's the same concept where, you know, we're not bringing in enough revenue to cover the expenses that have been paid from that fund. Um, there's a lot of data on the next couple of pages of this report, page three and four. I don't need to go over all of those. Um, I'm happy to take questions about any of it. Uh, the, the points that I will make is that salaries and wages are always the driving factor. Um, <clears throat> salaries make up about 83% of the budget. The rest is, you know, very minor percent is non-salary related. Um, Enrollment wise, uh, we are seeing a little bit of an increase in enrollment. We're up from last October. If you look on the bottom of page four, you can see the enrollment data there. Um, <clears throat> if there's no specific questions about that data, then we can move on to. Just a question uh -huh. on the on the two that we that we deleted already to it. We're not going to have to go out for outside services or anything like that which would cost us more money to take care of even if it's one child we're not going to we're not going to have to go outside <clears throat> for outside services for any of this right not as a result of not having that position i okay. can't say that there's not going to be something that comes up that for requires some, us to go right um i, I just i just want to delete point, something pointed out what it what it leaves us is um classroom instruction or students with an IEP who get special education services and not that piece in between that is support. And, and we, we find ways to provide support as best we can, but an ideal situation would be to have someone who is specifically trained to be an interventionist. It sounds like that position <clears throat> for those in between could help keep kids off Correct. the IEPs. Right. And an interventionist doesn't just work with students, also works with the teacher. It says, you know what, okay, so you're teaching this math lesson. The reason why we're seeing some kids missing here is because you're not doing enough visuals with Bible Here's some resources here. So it's, it's kind of a mutual support. Yeah. So, but, you know, at least that's how we're doing it in other buildings. It's kind of, it's not just a just pull out services or that kind of thing. So I guess the short answer, Bob, is no, not as a result of <coughs> not having that okay. position, but there are other, other factors of both. Yeah. Right, and, and it, I, it's hard to know at any time, which makes it difficult if there's going to be a, a new student who shows up and needs outside services or if one of our current students um, develops a need for something beyond what we have here already. Understandable. And I think, it's, I, I think where we're at here and so you can jump in because I'm going to shoot it down a little bit, is that that would be ideal, not the ideal like um, <clears throat> utopia ideal, but ideal like if we had the funds, this is what we would do with it right now. Us not putting the funds there doesn't put us in a, a disadvantage. I think other people will we'll figure out other means of getting it there. Um, we'd pound the table if that was, we'd say we really need that in here and we had to put it in the budget and then we'd have to cut somewhere else in order to get that in there. Um, I just want to kind of say that we, you know, because we're not fighting for it, it's kind of not saying that it's not, we're not trying to put a utopian idea out there, but it is one that will be okay. You know what I mean? Um, but it's good to understand and have those conversations about, you know, 
when you go to the store, but you're not buying you know, that kind of thing. And why? It's on. It's on our wants list. Right. It's kind of more of a needy want, but we can we can figure it out with that. Um, I, I do have a question about enrollment. In the past, we've had more like 18 to 20, 21 kids per class. Is there any time you see us in going back to that number um, when we could take more kids from? Well, our test? kindergarten class has 20 <laughs> this year, which is we in order to bring in more school choice, um, I went a little higher than I normally would like to do with kindergarten. Um, but that's not, we're not turning folks away. No. Your first choice. Um, and it's outside a discretion. Of that, outside of that class. So it's mm -hmm. not like, I mean, the, the cap, we haven't put a cap on it to expand this class up a little bit <clears> further. <throat> Those are just natural where the classes are right now. Outside of the kindergarten, where I think we said, <clears throat> we didn't have capping that recently. Can the, the group of kids that will be in first grade next year, um, I would like to leave it at 20. 20. So. so that's the only one that we're not kicks anymore with the other ones' classes we have. Is that the class that we knew we had a lot of residents? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Anything else before we continue? Okay. All right. So on page five, um, just a little recap here. Um, the major Drivers in this year's first draft increase are the $56,000 increase for employee raises, um, the $20,000 increase for employee separation costs, which is our retirement sick buyback payout, and then the $48,000, which is due to two additional IAs being put on the budget, not new staff, existing staff moving from revolving fund to general fund. Reminder that 1% is about $18,000. And in order to reduce our budget, say you all were comfortable with a 3%, that's what we said we wanted to bring to the town, we would have to reduce an additional $68,000 on top of the 41 that we've already cut off. <clears throat> Which so, is the retirement and the, the two IAs. Yeah, exactly. So it, I mean, it, this is difficult. In a small school, you're really seeing clearly that the first piece of this work raises for our staff, which we can't have a school without our staff. Our staff is amazing and everybody deserves the raises, but that is immediately, that's our 3% right there. And that's in the contract. That's so, in the yeah. contract and it's non-contractual staff. Yeah. So our custodians, our cafeteria staff, which all play equally important roles in, in the functioning of the school. So um, administrative staff, central office staff, that's all built into that. So um, <clears throat> it's hard for, any of our schools, everybody's gonna be facing the same challenge this year. Waitley's not on its own here, um, but you know that 3% increase, if that's our goal, we can't really do anything else, <laughs> which is not funny, but. Shall I, can I ask a quick question? Yep. So where it says early childhood, FY end of year, <coughs> with that tiny little number, mm -hmm. um, is that if the IAs remain? No. That's with the moving them to the general already. fund. And then that's all we're left with, mm -hmm. even if we move them off. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a comfortable spot for us to be in. One teacher's salary is in there. <clears throat> yep. I, when I looked at this the first time, I thought that was based on if we continue the oh, way right. it is currently. That, the expenditures for that account cover a teacher and then some minor expenses non-salary related. <clears throat> <That's clears throat> running off the projections that we have now, you could have more residents that without needs that are full paying that could adjust that one way or go the opposite way. We could have more residents that aren't paying um, due to needs. So so that could get better. Yeah. And all non-residents <clears throat> pay a tuition. <clears throat> Correct. Yes. No matter and, and what, no matter what, right? And a lot of residents pay tuition, but not yeah. if their child receives okay. special education services. So the other revolving fund I gave you here is school choice. Uh, I think that quickly, just important to look at that. You can see again, it's a similar theme to early childhood, although not as extreme where our revenue is exceeding our expenditures. So we are eating into some of our surplus, which is why I'm recommending that that 20,000 employee separation costs that we previously paid from school choice, we move off because that bottom line at the end of next year at 150,000, 
would be 130,000. And again, we're getting into that spot of being uncomfortable where we don't have one year uh, in arrears of revenue saved. And if we do have an out of district placement, that's 50, 60, $80,000, we're really going to be hard pressed to um, cover those expenditures. So uh, we certainly could talk about keeping that retirement on school choice. Uh, school committee has made that in the past, Matt made that decision in the past. Um, but just so you see what those numbers look like, you know, if we bring in more students, revenue goes up. But this is based on prior year and um, projections of where our October enrollment was. So that 20,000, that's for a, a, someone's retiring, correct? Okay. Not, Someone not, retired. Yes. Okay. Someone it's retired not, this past year? Yeah, it's yeah. not a new. If they don't let us know before September, September, is it September or October? I think it's October 1st. Yeah. Um, if they, let's, they have to take it the following year because we didn't have time to budget it. So that's, this is a person who retired last year. You can, you can do the mental map. You can do the years. mental map. <laughs> it's, it's a small community. Um, I, I suppose that's something to consider, but we won't know until we're closer to the end of the year. Yeah. Um, we we might know by the time, did everyone hear Maureen's question? Is there a way to take money from this year if there were savings and earmark that and put it away to pay for this expense, um, <clears throat> which is a great idea. So it is one of the, we, <clears throat> we talked, so there are different, we can go into our go solutions ahead. now, right? We yes, we can. So, yep. um, so there's the different either, there's different ways to move usually where different you have different styles of money that we can go for you know in the sense of one is we don't know where the town stands um with the funding from the state so we don't know what their budget looks like yet um and this is a budget where we do want to have conversations with probably the finance committee um so that they have an understanding of what we're doing because some of our <laughs> solutions are not long-term fixes okay um, you know, you started by talking about moving the 20K, either pulling it from school choice, okay, or you could also ask the town to put it separately and for them to pay for it out of creek cash so it doesn't increase the budget, the annual budget, but it's being paid for. Um, and then the third um, outside influx of money that we haven't talked about is that we do have some ESSER money to spend. Okay, you know, ESSER was the, the reminder is that the money that came COVID was ESSER 1, 2, and 3. I have too many budgets in my head. ESSER 2 is at um, what's available that's not already? That's a really good question. Most of ESSER 2, there's about 30,000 left for Waitley, but most of it is earmarked. So I don't think it gives us much right. of an option. No. That's for the town, not for the school. No, no that's, that's the ARPA. school's money. Okay. So you have ARPA went to the town, um, and then ESSER went to the schools. And so, um, and it's also a conversation with the town about <laughs> how are they spending the ARPA money and are they looking to pick up any of our capital projects with the ARPA money? This is where we kind of have to work together because oh, the ESSER money has certain things that only certain things you can pay for. So we would be moving, we'd be shifting our budgets around. So the ESSER 3 has significantly more money in it, yep. um, which is, I think, 155000 I have yep. my notes here. And some of that is also earmarked because you have to spend it, some of it on certain things that are uh pandemic related but there's also some you can also ask for a, an appeal or you can also um you know put into areas that we we spent we have to use that money by september of 24. which which one ESSER, ESSER three ESSER three All ESSER of it two has to, be, has to done. be done by next by 23. <clears throat> by ESSER two, two has to be september of 23 ESSER three september of 24. so we have um within this new budget, we'll have 18 months to spend that money. Um, we purposely hold money back on this. The state doesn't like um, that schools are using it to offset budgets. Superintendents are fighting back, like you're funding us short, especially out in Western Mass. Eastern Mass <coughs> doesn't have this kind of problem. Um, but we've been, a lot of our neighboring districts talking about this have been saving it because of, we've always been one budget to the next. So we could take a portion out of ESSER, therefore we'd be saving school choice money. It pushes the problem down the road. And that's just something that we have to know, we have to explain to other folks that, um, but that's kind of how small schools have worked. I'm not afraid of doing that because what else are we gonna spend the money on? You know, we could have done some capital projects with it, uh, new initiative projects with it. The actual interventionist would have been perfect um, use of that money. 
um, over multiple years to spend for that because you know it is you know you could say it's COVID related. Um, but so the so the idea is to use this outside some of this outside <clears throat> flux of cash. Um, and that's kind of where we that's kind of our presentation in the sense of uh, where we're at. We didn't go through and just map all that out. Um, it's really about understanding the landscape and whatever. So we there is a bailout this year and um, you know this year this year right <laughs> and so next year you'll have what's bailed out plus the growth yeah. in the budget again and so um and what will next year bring i don't know we may have other moving parts in the budgets you know what i mean you can have you can have staff that you know comes and goes it changes their budget you can have you know who knows what the state's coming out with you know are they going to do other kinds of types of funding um you know there's always been there's always something coming but it's also they couldn't come and then we could be in a more difficult position next year where the only way to make budgets reduce budget you know but my recommendation is that we use some of that sort to bring this down um and we're not making that decision tonight we're kind of just spinning do we know what we have to, yeah. to bring it down <clears throat> like what kind of a number because you said SR2 was already earmarked. So, so yeah. really, what she's saying, we should really look at SR3. We might be able to take a few grand from SR2 based on what we don't spend. But SR3 is 155. Some of that has been earmarked. You know, because yeah, we, we've you been using it for to pay for summer school and um, other things. So, there's a certain there. percentage that has to go towards um, mental health support that's required. So, we have to spend that, which is primarily being spent on um, consultants. Uh, we're using it to help fund um stipends for various things throughout the year that goes directly to teachers uh summer programming um which i know waitley combines with deerfield but we do have to <clears throat> pay help pay for some of those expenditures for the program at deerfield um so we could at least pay the two ia wages and take that forty-eight thousand off of the budget um <clears throat> the employee separation costs that's not an expense that would qualify under ESSER. That doesn't mean that we can't pay for, you know, an ESSER expense um, some, other way. some other way and, you know, kind of move the different silos of money around to cover that extra 20000 as well. Um, the 50000 for those two IAs, we absolutely can manage that. Um, I'm meeting with Laura and Sarah. Uh, tomorrow morning or maybe it's after this meeting to go over all of this and <coughs> remap out the plan um not just for wheatley but district wide on the ESSER spending now so that would only pay for their salaries for next year then we'd have a problem the year after right. and after that yeah, yeah. i think i think we're going to have <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong i think our final year the contract is three percent so no, i know it's three two two oh is it three two two okay that's so at least you have an idea yeah Right, and it, and it is, we think that it hit especially hard because of the amount of staff that's on steps. You know what I mean? So This so, year? Or well, it, it, might year. Be, it might be next year until they reach the top and then they're, all, they're not getting step plus coal. Um, and that, that's a factor of, you know, um, so we talk about every time we're in negotiations, that kind of stuff is that is that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so it's understanding that that's, we got hit the hardest when you look at just coal alone percentage to budget out of the, of the four towns, just kind of knowing where you're staying with other people. Um, um, <laughs> 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 um, so anyway, so just kind of knowing that it's, it is the, your staff is a living, of course it's a living thing, but it's also a living thing that goes up and down year to year and that kind of thing. So um, our preschool next year, you know, so you look at what could happen next year that'll help the budget. Preschool could be, have more funding. You know, by new students coming in, that's a small kind of adjustment. Um, school choice numbers could be changed by some. Could go the other way too. You know, um, if we don't have a retirement. If you have a retirement, you could have savings in a retirement, or if you, you know, or if you don't have a retirement, you have to buy out. It's one or the other, flip the right. other. Um, I mean, the preschool really is a, a unknown. You know, if you look back to 2017, mm -hmm. 18, even 19, revenue was up like. $30,000 more than what we have right now because there were less students with special needs. So, you know, it 
it okay. ebbs and flows right and then we so we, we play that game right so if preschool suddenly made a lot of money then we would start paying for an ia then offsetting the other budget you know and so you got to make sure you you know you slow down the other budgets if you're offsetting with other stuff but yeah. um and the services the services for the kids that need the extra services doesn't kick in until it reaches per kid like what twenty five thousand or thirty thousand or oh, something like that breaker, circuit breaker four, yeah it's above so it's it cost, so it costs i mean you have to <clears throat> Yeah, and right. the circuit breaker really only comes to play if you have a big out of district yeah. placement. Otherwise, your in house costs just yeah. aren't going to add up to enough. Um, yeah, so that's the, you know, that's what we're, that's kind of where we're at today. And so, but for the next meeting, um, we'll map out if you want us to go that way. Um, well, at least we have an idea. So if they took, did you write it down? I, I forgot. Did you, if you took the sixty-eight thousand dollars away, what would the what would the percentage be? You said like three point. Because we should be just be ready. I think if, you if, said three, if, three point three point oh one. Okay. I know in the case of best father, who was always big on the schools and taking care of the kids if they need extra services. You know, we probably would have best fathers backing as the finance person um, at, in the town to help with the different services at six point six one. But if we get backlash, at least we have a we have a backup that to help if we had to with the ESSA money. If, you know, I, I'd rather not I, use I, the. I, I, I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking that way. Okay. I think we we're talking about bringing that bodies down to around three, not coming up from six. Okay. That's what we're presenting to you where it's at six and then we're saying how do you bring this down i mean the bottom line is that extra money is going to go away and so um but we're also going to have that same bill yeah i, I know we're going to have maybe extra money next year but I think you're eventually saying, I think eventually you're, it's going to it's going to get caught up eventually us. we're going to get caught and so the conversation is you know what is the numbers at the time which we get caught and every yeah. school plays this game and you know i was on helm school committee for many years where you they said next year was going to be the fiscal cliff, and then there was another way of bailing out. And the next year is going to be a fiscal cliff, and then another way of bailing it out. And you know, when you look at the state, they don't have. I say the state when I'm talking about the one the commissioner was speaking to us. You know, he, you know, basically, they don't have sympathy for Western Mass problems. You know what I mean? And they, their thing is just regionalized. Yeah. Like that's going to solve the problems. You know what I mean? And that's not, you know, and so we're not going to go to that kind of. Right solution until the bit you know the bitter end so to speak um and maybe that bitter end in that wall i mean that cliff does get keeps getting pushed and there are new ways of you know doing things and that kind of thing so but um that extra money we don't have it earmarked for other programs i mean that's good i mean if if there were that I mean you have to look at what's the greatest what's the greatest thing that we need it for do we need it for the Sixty-eight thousand, or or do we need it? <clears throat> does Chrissy need it for something else that drastically need in the school? I know we. The, well, the positive side is that the building well is in good shape. There's not like it's not. We weren't sitting here like, oh, we really need that sixty-eight thousand to replace the boiler, and we could. You can actually use extra money for. Yeah. And we have, and we have, and we have all the new insulation. The is listening. We have all we have all the new insulation, which must be. Is there any? Well, that's coming from the town. The town's paying for that from our fund. That's why I say it's important to understand what they are willing to, because what they're willing to give, you know, right. um, as far as capital expenses and that kind of stuff, because we're not coming to them. I mean, our capital request this year, are, um, I, and I did submit, them, you know, it's about $10,000 to start the bathrooms, to do bathrooms, set of the bathrooms, and we're going to do it over the next three floors. years. Bathroom floors, rather. Um, and they just the tiles are just not sanitary anymore, and um, they need to be redone. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the other one is the AC, but the AC is I submitted it knowing that it's part of right now the town's taking on that by insulating first and then bringing in okay. AC and pump. It's also heaters. How so. how will we how is there any data that we know for? Of course, this is a mild winter, but do we have any data after all this new insulation they're putting in? Is there any? Do we have any data on not energy yet. use? I mean, well, not yet. Not, I mean, but will we? We can, we can yeah. do like everybody can do in their homes with yeah. their energy report and their consumption. Of I didn't. Yeah, that's how I was. Just... Has that been <coughs> any insulation? 
I don't know if it's yeah. completed. But it started. Yeah. I mean, when remember it started. Really? Well, like the pre-work, they've been here and they've been poking around up in the, I don't know what they're doing up there. Um, I thought this was done less. I know there was a delay on a lot of things and materials and stuff like that, but I thought it was going to be done last summer, but yeah. I guess not. <clears throat> no, they've, they've been here and they've scoped out. It, the attic is not an easy space oh, yeah. to navigate. There are parts you can I was walk up there through once. and there are other parts um, as described because I, I've I've peaked up there, and that's as far as I want to as I want to go. But it's tricky when you get over the cafeteria and the gym. So they've spent some time up there trying to figure out how the insulation is going to go, and okay. um, probably trying to figure out how they're going to get their equipment up there. And then a few years ago, we had issues with the roof, and then we were going to be doing ongoing maintenance, so that wouldn't happen again. That's still happening and already sure. budgeted for, right? Sure. <clears throat> but it also goes into where we were trying to increase the maintenance line. You know, I think we fixed that. Actually, we fixed that in the budget a few years ago. I think we had yeah. the budget because of that line because they had to go up there and refasten the, the tight screws weren't long enough. And so for the town grant money, the ARPA, we've currently only asked them for capital improvement projects. Something the, really to the physically only, the only the live capital improvement we asked for is the ten thousand dollars for the the flooring that we're controlling right now because they started doing the insulation project, they're kind of controlling the heating and cooling kind of thing. And whether or not they, they haven't been, um, I say the town, because there's different com different um, committees running different things. And I don't know who's running. The ARPA committee has not met, because you were on that yeah. for a while, has not yeah. met with some Long regular regularness and that kind of stuff um, about what is their plan. Are they planning on doing some of the AC with that or not? Right. Are um, you meeting with them again? I haven't heard of through. I'm I'm going to the town offices this morning. So do you know uh, how much there is and when they have to spend it by? Because there has to be something. I, I, I heard I as far as I remember, there was a lot of money still, but they were trying to I think they're trying to stretch it out for two years. So and that's they were gonna try to spend so much this year and spend so much will come will come this next year in 23, I right. suppose. Um, and we have received about 33,000 of ARPA funds already. They paid for the capital projects that we requested last year with ARPA funds, which was the dishwasher and then um, flooring, and I think some area rugs and things like that mm -hmm. you guys bought. <clears throat> but it's just, again, that's within understanding where their finances are because they're using the ARPA funds, they're not using free cash. I don't know if they, what they, their plans are for free cash, but again, to bring this number down, we could use ESSER funds and then pay $20,000 of the se police separation, ask the town for that kind of money. Um, but it's it's all about how you want to move the money around. It's, it's again, then we next year we'd have some leftover ESSER money that we would pay for a project that we would have went to the town for anyway. So it's just kind of like how you want to, where you want to put your bills and how you want to pay for it. You know what I mean? And so it may be just cleaner just to do straight up you know, paper to ESSER money, and then next year we won't have any leftover money for a capital project with ESSER, and then we'd have to go to the towns for next year's. Or the salaries. And we and have we're, had... We're gonna have to, we would have to put the salaries back on budget. Those, right. those yeah. salaries eventually, there's not going to be that outside funding. It's those two items, though, the, the 20000 and the 48000 IA that mm -hmm. we have to... Right. And, Is early childhood ever going to cover those IA costs? I mean, there would have to be a significant change in the population, which you're probably years out from yeah. at this point. And then it, it, the problem is if we're at, I, mean, I didn't look at the number. Say if there's 20 kids in there right now, how many more kids can a classroom hold unless, right? unless you go to another yeah, another IA or two classrooms? I mean, that's, I mean, that's the only way you're going to get enough money right. to pay for, you know, for all these Cost things. Cost is always going to go up. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to see that hit, even if we use ESSER, which I think that this is a smart use of ESSER funds. 155000 for Waitley is a lot of money. It's a significant percentage compared to our budget. And it's while we do have plans for some of it, and we will find a way to spend it because we're certainly not giving it back to the state, this is a good use of those funds. But there's risk involved, and we will see when we build the 25 budget, 2025, this 50000 come back. On to general fund, and we'll have the same conversation next right. year. 
And that employee separation cost, I mean, this is a conversation, this is my fourth budget with you all, and it comes up every year. How are we going to pay for this one retiree? Which, mm -hmm. in some ways, it could be worse. What did I say yesterday? What oh, was God, the flip side of that? It could be I've seen worse. I've seen worse. <laughs> um, I mean, we could be in a situation where if we didn't have it, like in the contract, you know, like giving us a year's notice when you want to separate, at least you, at least you can plan for it. It's not like, I'm retiring tomorrow and I need this twenty thousand dollars. Like, how you know, where are we gonna come up with twenty thousand dollars? You know, we would come up with it, but it's how would you come up with it? You know, what have, are you gonna take it away from? <laughs> yeah. We have had other towns in the district either pay for this piece, the employee separation costs under a separate warrant or um last year ARPA funds. Um, so it is a possibility, like the ARPA cannot. ARPA doesn't have to be just spent on capital projects. So if the town, you know, if we went to the town and said, we have this expense, can you help us? Right. And the politics <clears throat> of ARPA is that you only need the select board's approval. You don't need the town's approval. And it's just important to know because when they're gonna, if you take controversial projects where you're not sure how it's going to go, sometimes the select boards have been choosing, you know, I'll give you, if, you, if you, the town needed a new tractor, Everybody likes to debate tractors at town meetings. You know what I mean? You know, they do. It's right. Everybody's got an opinion on tractors. And so they, you know, they get papers straight out of ARPA and then say, you know what, we'll put the more less the other debatable item on town meeting floor. You know what I mean? Like carpet. So but so I don't know how they're lining things up either. I th I think it's a great idea. Like I'm just watching this little unit up here over here versus using a whole furnace, this thing is probably heating this room right now, the majority <clears> of it, which, okay, what costs more, electricity or something else? And a lot of people are going to their mini splits in this kind of weather to heat their houses. Well, this, in, this, in, in this, schools, are, schools are, are good for the idea of a mini split because of the amount of days that we come to school where it's chilly in the morning and moderate during the day. You know, your, your September, October. Your I'm not April, sure what it's set at, but it's, but it's comfortable and I'm not sure if, if anything else is really heating here, but that's heating the room right now, that that unit right there. And if if more you know more <clears throat> rooms get these units, I mean that's a I think overall over a period of year, that's a big savings if electricity is less than natural gas or oil. I mean, my daughter lives in Ocean Beach, California. And they have a grid from 12 midnight to 12 or whatever it is midnight to midnight. This is when you should use your appliances and your dryers. And this is when it's the cheapest. I mean, it's like four different grids that she just got in the mail and they just went up 50% where she lives on electricity. Wow. <clears throat> so it's like, you know, we're coming, we're coming to something like that. But California has been like this. My other daughter, she only could do her washer and dryer from like 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. because that was the cheapest electric cost was between those hours to do your laundry. So um, I think with next draft, so we have a meeting on the 14th of February. So we we'll, talk about that. Oh, right. You want to talk about that. <clears throat> Go ahead. Jump in. So I think so, so I got to. Uh, uh, Maureen, I got a note from Brian um, that the the finance committee wants to talk to us prior to our voting of the budget. And um, we're we voting on the 14th. No. We, we prior to the public hearing, I guess. Okay. Sorry. Saying, which is um, it, which is the 14th. No, so that's no, not so <laughs> they asked for like, the 21st. They did. They asked for February 21st. At six, yeah. Um, I have a jury do that day, so I can't do that either way. That's also during winter break, and I don't know what people are around and that kind of stuff. I think we all got it. Um, anyway, right now, the 14th is set for 4 p.m. Um, I think we probably should try to have a designated evening to talk about this, the next step of this budget, and um, ask if we can get a rep. The it's 21st difficult. is also during um, school vacation. It's vacation week. week as well. Um, so. Are we thinking maybe the 14th? Do a well, joint the 14th meeting? Frontier is a 6 p.m. meeting. So they already spilled okay. your, your, your <clears throat> evening slot there. Um, 
we could look at the 15th, the following day. Um, or the 8th, the week before. Or the 8th, the week before. I mean, we have to come in here. I'm not sure what the heat's going to be set at on during school vacation. I don't know if you even need me there, but I won't be around that week. The 8th is multiple things are going on that night. I don't think during school vacation week is it it's a sixth grade frontier thing. Oh. One of those talks that Laura Ramsey sent through, out through Bright. Yeah. yeah. Um, basketball. Yeah. All right. So, eighth is tough. Um, Back to 15. 15. Um, is this replacing the meeting on the 14th? Yes, and we're moving the 14th. The the and seeing yeah. if finance committee can join us, right? right? <clears throat> Would, would, it be, would it be Monday, easier Monday for the Monday the thirteenth? Would it be easier for the finance committee to come here, or is it easier for us to go to them and then go into a room and finish our meeting <coughs> at the town offices or something like that? Maybe. I mean, sometimes yeah. they don't want to come to us. Yeah, I, if we go I'm to them, with that. get them what they need to do, we can finish the rest. Meeting, of, huh? Going to their meeting. Well, if we if. Yeah, if they want to well, see we, us. We have to post it as a meeting. So it's going to be our meeting. It's just going to be in a different, if we're doing it with them, they're going to post a meeting too if they're coming. Yeah. Because <clears throat> they're not going to come here. Your father may come here for a meeting or something, but yeah, typically, the whole committee's not. yeah, they're not going to come unless we go <clears throat> to them. And that way we could maybe at that time present. Be nice if the select board was there too at the same time. Kill two birds. Is that what I've they been were saying this for years. For? Charlie, to kill two birds with one stone. In, um, yes. Oh, okay. They, they want to have a joint meeting with, with all of us and all of them. Did they suggest a date? Yeah, yeah. they suggested the 21st, oh. um, which is hard because the vacation um, sounded like that wasn't going to work either. Yeah. It's during school vacation and um, Darius has something. In. I guess it's theory during the day. But, um... Well, what if we, can we ask Brian if a couple of dates work and then settle there? Yeah. So let's look at two. So one, and I have to, have to explain to them that front, they really don't know the frontier assessment, so they only have happy schools. I know it's not this committee's problem, but just so you guys know that the the, the, the governor's budget is not going to come on for the first week of March, and so we won't have a gen. And you know, obviously, it's a conservative, the more conservative of the budgets, but we won't, so we won't have the assessments. You know, we're running some scenarios through stuff that Shelly's put together, but we can't, you know, so we can start the budget process, but we can't share that publicly <clears throat> without knowing what the assessments are. So, um, so we could do, we could go to the final week in February. It's a long wait, but right now our budget, how we're going to solve it is pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? Um, and we're not, it doesn't appear that right, there's no cuts on the table and that kind of stuff where there's going to be a lot more um interest rather than just stuff around. so you could look at like march 1st <laughs> wednesday march 1st the 28th um i have something personal that day so um i can't do that but you know so if we do march 1st are we then moving the march 7th meeting and is our february gonna, <laughs> meeting going to be march 1st march Seventh, I believe, was going to be our public hearing. Right? Didn't you see we're doing that? Yeah, one? March seventh. But you want completely in front here, back to back. Yeah. I think we messed up the calendar when <laughs> it's this year. Well, we've done in the past. <coughs> they used to always be in the morning, though. Right. And then when we said we just moved to four o'clock. Yeah. Um, because we're going to have a budget subcommittee meeting for Frontier before that, probably. Before the 6 o'clock Frontier meeting. So we could do the Wheatley meeting, the March meeting, move it from the 7th to the 15th. All right, first is November. <clears throat> so if we do March, the February meeting, March 1st. Okay. 
What was you said something about February thirteenth as possibility? We could do we could do Monday the thirteenth. Would you would folks? So we might that? not have all our information. Is that what we were thinking? We wouldn't have the frontier budget, but that's just it is what it is. You know, I mean, at least we'll solve the Wheatley budget that time. Um, you know, we could do is we could say. No, it's not March 15th, it's February 13th. I could present them both and let them decide if we can. Do <clears throat> Even on March 1st, we're not going to have Frontier's budget. Right? Okay. Correct. So, either way, they're they're only getting in this first round, Whitley Elementary. Correct. And they won't be able to have, just so you know, regarding the Frontier, they're not going to be able to have a special session with us because. Um, <clears throat> we're going to get the, the we're going to get March first or March second the governor's budget put it together and have multiple frontier meetings before it has to be approved before the eleventh. So so you're going to be busy then. The so we're going to I'm going to it's just yeah. they need to come to the frontier meeting because they have <clears throat> frontier information. It's just what it is. It's not it's not frontiers committee's <laughs> fault, but it was if we by our statute we have to deliver the budget <clears throat> by the eleventh to the towns because it has to be forty five days out. So Frontier, we kind of, and we're going to talk about them with them tonight, but we're going to have multiple meetings over a two-week period to approve a budget. And so they're not going to be able to have special sessions. They're going to have to come to the Frontier if they want to see it. Um, they want an explanation of the Frontier budget prior to us sending it to them officially. So tell me <clears throat> why can we present the Waitley one? Because the, the, the gov so we develop our budget for elementary and we basically send the number to the town, right? And the town figures out how they're gonna pay for it based on the numbers from the state. Frontier can't <laughs> send the numbers to the town without the state telling us how much money we're getting. Where the town gets, you know, it pays for all of its things from its numbers from the town. We know the annual growth, if we're around that percentage, we're gonna be okay. Um, they, and again, they should have an idea, just like we have an idea what Frontier's mm -hmm. gonna have. We have an idea what the assessments are, but we could be off by a point. In that by point by a yeah by a percentage point, which is significant. Um, so you understand what I mean? So Frontier yeah. can't build the assessment, so we can't say this is how much you owe, which is what the Frontier reps are voting on. They don't just vote the budget; they vote what the assessment is, and they can say, you know, we can't afford this, or we need to move things around, or that kind of stuff. So, and we don't have the information to make the assessment until March first or second, when the governor's budget comes out. But because our statute says we have until the eleventh of March to let the the towns know or else we're in violation of our statute of our agreement so that's why that they're in a thing where the elementaries are not and this is normally a non-issue because usually the governor's budget it has to come out the last wednesday in january but because there's a new governor they get five extra weeks okay <clears throat> was it late last year too it was late last uh the uh, governor's wasn't the uh the uh, legislative yeah. so so usually we have the governor's budget and we would not have this problem. Right. We'd be ready by mid to late right. February. But we won't this year. And really also interesting, I mean, the governor's budget is usually the most conservative, you know, that we also had a conservative governor. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're offering March 13th, I mean, February 13th or March 1st to the town. Does that feel okay with people? And just let them decide which one they want to go to. Just and tell me we'll, when to come. <laughs> you said we'll February 13th or March Monday the 13th or, uh, yeah, that's not Monday the 13th. Yeah. It is, mm -hmm. it is. Um, or Wednesday the 1st. <clears throat> um, and there is, you know, as far as other, right now, well, there's not kind of something water on there. Um, there's nothing else that's pending that we need to have a meeting immediately in the next three weeks. There's not going to be a lot of different policies sitting there, that kind of thing. Um, so it's really just it's budget, budget, budget. So we're definitely not doing our meeting on um, the 14th. The 14th. No, so that's going to be moved. And we're saying whatever day it is. That we come to an agreement, it will probably be more like six p.m. because that's when. Yeah, these would both. Be, either of these would be at six. <clears throat> or 
if they say 6.30 or something like that, but it's gonna be evening. <clears throat> that sound good? Yep. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> We're not done yet. Right. <laughs> so are we finished with budget and timeline? I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> One down. Four more to go. <clears throat> And they're probably the smallest one to take care of. Mm -hmm. Is anybody in bad shape for them? Out of that, how they're seeing this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you say who? I think Deerfield. Deerfield was. What? Bob's asking who else is in bad shape. shape. You guys are <clears> this the toughest one. I really? think Deerfield's been. Is you guys be are in a tough too. one, but you have the. There's a bailout. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's an XK patch here on this one, but. I don't know. We haven't had the other one, so I don't want to say too much. Like, oh, we haven't had this is the yeah. first budget meeting of the year. I <laughs> get you guys during this whole process. It's it's tough. I mean, you can present it, but you know, it's up to the school committee and public factors of town. You know. I'm not sure how much free cash still Deerfield has, so <clears throat> I shouldn't say free cash. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so we have to decide how we want to, um, where we want to move these, or have we decided that? So I'm going to ask the town to pick one of those bids. No, I mean, not sorry, not the meeting, but the the IA salary and the retirement. So this is the first read. So basically, we're going to come back with the next one, um, unless the committee objects to the recommendations right now so we kind of giving you the recommendations that we're going to remove those things and um set up a way to <clears throat> take off the yeah, ias and put it use ESSER funding and show you will develop a you know, sheet narrating that and then we're going to have a, a second discussion at the next meeting with um you know with the town as well and the south the uh retirement too is that we're going to ask to put that in an ESSER or on a warrant. I, th I think that's still up for discussion. I think it's a good talking point with the town. <clears throat> um, and then I can take a look and see what other funds might be available. Right. We'll have a cleaner picture of what ESSER has been. We can break down what ESSER has already been committed, um, you know, for summer school and, and so on and so forth. Some of the other ones, but again, you have to pay for it at certain brackets, but we can. Then bring it to the town. What you know? Do we pick it up, or do they want to pick it up? I don't think they're going to want to pick up anything. I mean, we'd want to do something like that, right. but um, at least have a discussion, right? So I think <laughs> the discussion with the town with this particular piece is that it's not likely that this uh, expense is going to go away. So how do they want us to handle it? Do we want to just add this to the budget, and that's growth? And now moving forward, it's part of the budget, or do we continue this conversation every year of how to pay for this expenditure? Because again, this isn't the first time that we talked about this. It. It'll be <clears throat> it'll add a one yeah. plus percentage point every year, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, that'll be a discussion point for the next one. I mean, it's a lot. Okay. There's a lot here for you guys to kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the idea is to get a snapshot of where it is, what what what's causing the growth, different solutions. Imagine you'll think about it. Stare at the ceiling at night, and then at the <laughs> next meeting, you know, you know, we're going to discuss how we solve it, and we'll have other people in the room giving their input as well. And yeah, it's then, just tough because the preschool program doesn't support itself. Right, and that's kind of the reality. Is moving forward, the preschool program yeah. is not going to support itself. Right. <clears throat> I think there was only, if I remember right, there was only one year after paying everything, there was actually a, a surplus of money that we had. Can't tell you what year it was, but but it comes down to services. 
if you have less services, you have more money. You have more serve. You have to pay out more services. Then it's like this year, where well, we're going to so have two thousand. The preschool was half day. Probably. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> okay. Are we ready for this? Okay. So I guess we're ready to move on to be continued. Yeah. We are. Okay. So the preschool tuition rates and aftercare rates. So, um, well, so one, one reason why preschool, this is not going to say it solved the preschool problem, um, but we have not done a market adjustment for um, preschool <clears throat> in quite a while. And so in front of you, I just, um, this gives me a copy for you, is a comparison to um, other public schools, the top, and then private schools down below for preschool. And, um, our recommendation is next year is to uh, move it to seven dollars an hour, um, and that's um, is that forty two per day? Forty two cents. Yeah, no, forty two dollars per. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. thirty five and change right now, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's thirty eight fifty. Oh, thirty eight fifty. Right, I'm going up memory. Um, it's like 52 cents more a day, I think. I mean, an hour. So times six is 350. Yeah. yeah. So 38, it'll be like 42. Yes, you're right. I just was going up. <clears throat> so we can change that to, to uh, 42 per day. Um, and then you can kind of see the breakdown comparative prices. So this increase is driven not because of budget, although all of the preschool programs could definitely use an increase in revenue. Um, but this is just really driven by the fact that we haven't done a market increase in some time. So looking at the market and seeing what our competitors are receiving um, or other public schools are receiving, uh, we just feel like it's time for that increase. It will bring in for Waitley, depending on enrollment and who is tuition paying, you know, maybe another five or eight thousand dollars, which is helpful when we're looking at only a two thousand dollar end of year next year. So you know that kind and of is still competitive. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. And we have to decide on that as a union. No, you it's guys are individual. Your own. Yeah, okay. we're going to ask everybody to be the same, but <clears throat> so we're not doing price wars within ourselves. <laughs> but um, technically. This is where we are. This is the weirdness of our district. You guys can have your rate because you are waiting. Deerfield can have their rate because they're Deerfield. But do we have to vote on? It? Yes. Okay. Right. And I don't remember the after school rate piece. That's not the after. It's preschool after school, right? Right. right. So it's a continuing. They continue to pay the hourly rate. Like an extended okay. day. Okay. We actually don't have that. So yeah, you don't have it here. If they were, this would be true. Right. Okay. What is our after? What's our after school rate? No, like for the regular after school program, I have no idea. Did you say we aren't doing that right now? We don't have extended day for pre K. Oh, for pre K, we did before COVID though. Right? We did. Yeah. So we're talking. We're hoping to do that again next <clears throat> year. Not sure. It depends on need because then okay. we end up with depending on how many students yeah. are there. The reason Again. we don't have it now is we didn't have enough sign up to be to yep. make it cost effective because pre-K requires greater supervision. Yeah. And, right. Um, so it's another place we could potentially lose money. Right. <clears throat> and Wheatley's not the only program that dropped their pre-K after school. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that started before COVID. I think it was like uh, my first year here before COVID even hit that we started to make that change. <clears throat> you might have still had a program, we but another school. We're slowly seeing a shift in the needs and it's you know not cost effective for anyone to fund someone to pay to, to work for one or two students did we lose any students because of that not that i know of but it's possible that yeah something <coughs> changed their mind about it sounds like there might be people ready to take their place if we did you know don't we usually have people well, we recently turned someone away, but it was for a right now entry. Yeah. Um, 
but we our preschool program is usually full. Oh, oh, oh. You know what I believe uh, Kim McCarthy, who oversees now, is overseeing um, early childhood. Um, I believe she's doing a survey, so that might be something we could ask. Um, just to kind of get another uh, information data point where they say, you know, would you be interested in an after school program if there was one in place, if we had one, you know, that kind of stuff. How often would you ask, you know, that kind of thing? Because that way we can get a real, how, what do parents want versus, right, you, know, right. you know, what they're saying? Besides what they're saying at the coffee shop, what are they saying? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> are we voting on this increase today? You can, or you can table the next day. We don't need, well, actually, we do need to know if we're doing signups right now. So, you know, yeah, we're confirming. Does anyone today. have any other questions about it? Are you guys ready to make a motion? Move it. Move it. Okay. A second. All in favor? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, since we're, we're talking, we just talked about uh, preschool here. I was just thinking about after school program. Just, just a thought. I mean, I'm not sure. Last time we had an increase for after school participation. And, and did an adjustment there a couple of years ago. A couple of years okay. ago. So I'm not sure where we lay. Does it take care of all the people that work after school? You know, there again, are we yeah. are we pulling from Peter to pay for Paul? Could we not pull it up? Okay. Yeah. That's, and, and it's that's, certainly not making no. much money. Um, but it's paying. But it else. is paying for itself. Okay. <clears throat> and again, Since we brought the other one, I just right, you know, right, just right. I mean, because the cost and the costs are different. The, 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 the personnel is different. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So now we're on to the gift from Yankee Candle. Get Yankee Candle. That's that's an annual yeah. gift, right? Chrissy, you want to say what you got? They gifted us with four thousand dollars again. Yeah. Did you send get the check already? I yeah, I have it on my okay. table. Do you want me to take it or okay? Is it really big? Well, no, I don't want to take it. <laughs> no, the first one I got, and I still have that one that they gave me presented us. Oh, it hanging on your wall. The, <clears throat> the kids get a kick out of it huh. when they see it. Um and then the second year, is that COVID? No, not yet. Um but like last year he came here. We took we had a photo up in front of the Waitley seal in the cafeteria, but I had my mask. He had his mask. <laughs> <clears throat> and this year we were at a four town safety meeting and Malcolm Wolfman just handed it to me. Oh, I guess we're we're stepping down. It was like a big event the, the <laughs> first year. We were at Yankee Candle and we had a breakfast and and all that. And now it's like here's your check. <laughs> um, so we're we're very grateful for that. And I think in the past, did you use it for robotics or something like that before? That was what I was going to use it for. We were piloting some different robotics programs yep. and then COVID hit. And I did not, I, I wanted to hang on to that as emergency funds for anything. You know, at that time, no one knew what was going to happen. So, um, and I still, we did level funding that year I after. I still so. have it all. Yeah. Are you doing? Mm -hmm. Are you going to? If we get back in the robotics and stuff, are you going to use it for? Yeah, what we have been looking at, we have um, <clears throat> some pretty good robotics equipment for the older grades, and we wanted some something in the line of coding for the for the younger kids. Um, yeah, some of the kids came to our meeting and demonstrated. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. Oh God, that feels like a million years ago. It is. It seems like that. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have to vote on accepting the gift? Yes. yes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Yes, you I don't have much. Um, you know, we, we, our community lost Marty Barrett, and I just want to give my condolences to her family. And from all of us and I think she I think she was here after my son's what during his second year of preschool but I wasn't so involved um but I, from what I remember she did a good job and then also the collaborative lost their HR director Cheryl Rogers and she died of cancer I didn't know she was doing uh not doing well with that 
but to uh, give our condolences to her family too. And happy new year to everybody. That's all I have. Um, so. Superintendent's report. Yeah, yeah, just to, to echo on the, the condolences to Mark <clears throat> Jared. And she obviously, well, me not obviously you folks, but she hired me um, and mentored me through, you know, she was 11 years at Frontier, three years at Sunderland Elementary, so, and then three years as superintendent. So she was here for 17 years in this district. And before that, she was a principal in Greenfield. Um, but just, uh, you know, the managers of, uh, Gavin, you know, her wakes today, you know, tomorrow. Shout out. Um, so, but again, thank you for those for thinking of her there. Um, my report is, um, is straightforward. Sorry, I got sidetracked my thoughts there. Um, we have the CMSI equity audits underway. Um, I sent out a note to the community today talking about the surveys coming. The amount of the collection of data and such is just, and that's I can do my writing later and send that to you. I send it to you. It'll be late evening. Um, but you know, we are collecting like right now over 60 data points. It's just a lot of work. It's really most of it's coming out of central office for them to get in advance. <clears throat> they are coming March 12th um, to the 22nd, and they'll be doing site visits, interviews, and such. And so, um, I don't know. They will definitely be interviewing school committee members. Um, because in our school committee members, I don't know how they're going to, we have to, we still have to set up what their business is going to look like because of the uniqueness of, you know, um, they visit multiple buildings before, but multiple committed communities. Um, so we'll have something that, that is something you want to be, you want to be interviewed. Um, just keep that in mind. It'll probably be something, something out there. It'll be some level of volunteerism there, uh, but they are going to want, um, leadership to be uh, interviewed. <coughs> Um, our superintendency agreement, we had a meeting on November 16th, kind of got, we got tied up amongst ourselves. We got to do a restart. Um, it's difficult when you start talking about, um, I thought it was going to be really smooth sailing and then we got into really debates about what should the agreement say and such. So we kind of need another meeting to get going. Like that. Um, I thought we'd be presenting to you this month some kind of draft and we didn't get there. Um, do we have other... Districts. I have model, model model ones yeah. for the ones. The problem is that the other models are just they're better than what we have because we don't have anything, um, but they're not great either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, they're you know this kind of they were developed in very much the same way we were. You know where you the four towns got together said hey we'll share the superintendent and then they never really put in the paperwork behind it and then the the job of the superintendent of the superintendent superintendent evolved over time and you know, all of a sudden you're here now. Um, I just mentioned again, for those who, if any seniors are watching at home, we are, I am doing a, uh, South County Senior Center coffee and conversation with Frontier Regional, um, and invited them to, um, Frontier on January 31st in the morning to visit the school during the school day and go around and see things and talk about education today and what, um, what's happening behind the walls. <coughs> how education is different and the same, um, from when they were in school and just kind of trying to create some lines there of communication with them. The idea is to develop even more as time goes on, but starting with coffee and conversations and see what that takes off. Um, it's also a good big building winter event for people who've been trapped inside their homes to really get around and that kind of stuff. Um, and then what the last thing I, Sorry. Is that, What time is that at? It's at nine in the morning. Um, you gotta be a senior citizen. I'm sure I'm close enough. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, we're presenting tonight the Superintendent's Academic Excellent Award with the Cindy Scalen, um, who's a resident of Deerfield, senior class. Um, but we'll be doing that tonight. But just mentioning that we had she went to be had a awards banquet in December for her. Um, just great, great student, great kid. What do you present it as? Is it a special thing just for that? They have a they have a, a Franklin County superintendents all get together and they meet at the Franklin Tex restaurant and they do a dinner and give awards that evening um, just for the superintendents award. Mm -hmm. So it's an academic excellence award. So it's uh, primarily academics, but also what do they give in leadership and to community? That's all I got. Oh, I I do have the um, first meeting for the capital. Improvement Planning Committee is 
next week. Okay. That was something with the left hand mentioned. Let me know if you need me to go to the other. <clears throat> All right. We need yeah. to delay the land if you want me to come in to just kind of. You sent that right a while ago. The uh, our, did you send that yeah. to them or? or you... I sent it before break. Right. I have to look at that. I probably will want to talk to. Okay. You. Okay. It's straightforward. Yeah. Bathroom floors and getting into doing it annually. So we're going to ask for ten thousand dollars ish for the next three years for that project. Yeah. And then the AC is the bigger one if they want to break that up into components because it can be um, but it also there's rebates and they got to keep an eye on the rebates you know and the hondo is going to go up here <clears throat> and um you said the insulation is being paid out of something else so the town has taken that on so that's why we don't even know like where oh, they are okay. on the projects and it's you know it's a conversation i probably have to have with them about where we are with it um all these other projects we we control so when the flooring people were we're doing the, you know, we're getting the estimates, bringing them in, setting the mm -hmm. dates, this kind of thing. The town kind of took off. When we went to them for the AC, they said, no, we really want to work on the envelope first. They took that and they're going to pay for it with their funding for it. So that's why it's kind of like, wait, how does he not know what's going on? That's kind of really, and I'm not involved in those meetings. And um, if I see and Brian today, I got to go over there. If I see Brian, I can, okay. I can just ask him if there's an update on it at all. I could text you or, or whatever. So. Okay, um, that's it. Do Make a motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor? Yes. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned at 934.